we've been talking about Gaussian distributions, and in particular, multidimensional Gaussian distributions. These are really good about capturing the idea of having a set of samples that are gathered around some particular mean location. The peak of the likelihood function in the Gaussian distribution is at that mean, and as samples move away from the, the mean, the likelihood drops off. How quickly it drops off really depends on that covariance matrix that we've been talking about. These distributions are really good at representing individual clusters that have an ellipsoid type uh, structure to them. But in lots of scenarios, uh, our, our data sets don't really have this uh, structure. And, and in fact, many data sets have scenarios where they uh, might have uh, a cluster in, of points in one area, another cluster in another area, and they're not even connected to one another. And our Gaussian distributions in and of themselves really aren't good at capturing these kinds of interesting scenarios. So let's uh, look at an example here, and, uh, and then we'll talk about the mathematics behind mixture distributions. Let's start by looking at a single Gaussian case. Actually, let's, we'll call it a single cluster case in one dimension. So there's our feature right there. And if I have a, a set of points that looks like this, then it's very easy to imagine a Gaussian distribution that can fit to this set of samples. So it's centered at the mean, which sits right around in here, and then it drops off uh, from there. So our Gaussian might look uh, something along those lines, a little bit more symmetric than what I drew there. So, so this distribution captures that set of samples really well. But imagine a scenario where I have a different type of structure. So there's our x0 space, and we have a set of uh, points uh, in here. And say on the right-hand side, we've got another set of points. Now, we could fit a Gaussian distribution to this. So, so we can use our maximum likelihood estimation uh, process to figure out a Gaussian. And, and that might look uh, something, let's see, the mean of this distribution probably sits uh, about here, since there are more points on the left-hand side. And it has a pretty broad standard deviation. So it's, it's going to look something like this. So this covers our, our set of points reasonably well, but one thing that's a bit uncomfortable here is that we've got this region in here where we're assigning a, a nice high likelihood, but in our original sample, we don't have any points here. Now this just might be a sampling issue, but it could also be the real nature of our data set. What we'd like to do is develop a probability density function that captures this particular distribution uh, a lot better. So let's draw one of those in. We'll go ahead and erase this uh, first distribution. But Im imagine a scenario where we had uh, a distribution that looks like this. So, th so this set of points here that's very tight, so it, it has uh, a high likelihood that's sort of in the middle and it, and it sort of drops off. And, and over in this space, so, so in this region here, we, let's assume we have zero likelihood. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, bring our likelihood function down to zero. And in this region here, we've got a few points. It's, it's more sparsely populated. So the likelihood in this space is not going to be as large. Um, but we can um, bring the, another lump up here, say, uh, that captures uh, that uh, region there. The, the height of the lump is related to how many points we actually have in this region as compared to this region over here. Now, this distribution is very uh, is, is quite satisfying in the in the sense that now within this intermediate region, we don't have uh, any samples, and we've also assigned something near zero likelihood to to that region, and and perhaps that captures our data better. 
at the same time, we're also capturing the notion that we've got a high density of points here. And, and we have some points here, not, not quite as dense as uh, on the left-hand side. So what we can do, if, if, we, if we had just one of these lumps, we could actually model that as a Gaussian distribution. So, so this lump here, I could model that as a likelihood function that looks like this. And it has a mean, and I'm going to call that mean zero, and a covariance matrix. And that's also covariance matrix zero. And, and over here, we could model that with yet another probability density function. And that would look like this. M1 and, and sigma 1. And, and in fact, we can, we can uh, use these two Gaussians, combine them together to achieve this PDF that's in the, in, indicated in red. So let's actually write that equation out. So the likelihood function here looks like this. So we have a likelihood of x, so some sample. And that's going to be a function of several different things. It has to be the parameters of our two constituent Gaussians. So we have our m0 and our sigma0 and m1 and sigma sigma 1. And, and then we also have to say something about the balance between these two Gaussians. And we really have a bit more mass on the left-hand side than we do uh, on the right-hand side. And the way I'm going to express that is in terms of uh, a W0 and a W1. And how we're going to use those uh, looks like this. Define this to be uh, a weighted sum of the two Gaussian distributions. So W0 likelihood so so we know what that thing is there and w1 uh, multiplied by the likelihood function of the right hand side now the constraint here is that all of our w's have to be between 0 and 1 and it's also the case that all of our w's have to sum to 1. In this case, what that means is w0 plus w1 is equal to 1. So once we've chosen a 1, the other one is completely determined. So because we, we meet these two criteria here, um, sorry, this one here and this criterion here, because we started with two proper probability density functions, in particular they were they're Gaussians, when we take the weighted sum of two PDFs and the weight to add up to one, uh, then what we end up with is again a proper PDF. So this piece here is, is a, a, an appropriate PDF. The more general form, we don't have just uh, two Gaussians, but we can have a, a, a whole set of Gaussians. And so the general form for this, so I'm going to write this as px given, and I'll just say m and sigma and uh, w uh, to mean that I have uh, a whole set of, of m. So this is m0, m1, down to m big K minus one, and likewise for sigma, And, and W is also W0, W1, and on down to WK minus 1. So we can set this equal to just a weighted sum over all of these Gaussians. And that sum looks like this, WK likelihood of, of X given MK and Sigma K. And as long as we adhere to uh, these two criteria here, then this full 
probability density function is indeed a, a pro proper probability density function. One of the nice things about using Gaussian distributions is that they can be used as uh, something called generative models, meaning we can draw new samples from an existing model. With a Gaussian distribution, we already know how to draw a sample from that distribution, and there are nice library functions that you can uh, call within Python or any other programming language that will allow you to uh, sample at least from a standard normal distribution, and then it's relatively easy to transform that uh, into even a multi-dimensional Gaussian of, of any shape, in fact. To sample from a mixture distribution, one, we have to pick a component PDF. We'll call that uh, lowercase k. So in our original example, we, we have two different Gaussian distributions to select. We select one of those, and we're going to do that according to the probability distribution that is defined by our weights. If W0 is, say, 0.5, W1 is 0.3, W2 is point, uh, let's say, 0.1, and W4 is 0.1, then what this means is that half the time we're going to select Gaussian 0, 30% of the time we're going to select uh, Gaussian 1, and 10% of the time we'll select Gaussians 2 and 3. So once we've picked our PDF, we can then just sample from that constituent probability density function. And that's according to, and, that, and that's that PDF function again uh, looks like this. So it's likelihood of X given the mean of PDFK and our covariance matrix K. Let's do a quick example, and let's work now in a two-dimensional feature space. And I'm just gonna construct this on the fly here. And let's imagine having a, uh, a Gaussian that is uh, centered at, uh, at this location here. So mean zero is seven and three. And I'm, I'm not gonna spend really much time worrying about the details of our sigma. Oops. But uh, here I'm, I'm just going to assume that, that it is nominally uh, a simple distribution. So the, uh, the likelihood function will look something like this. So the, the peak, of course, is at the mean, and then we've got our ISO likelihood uh, lines that look like this. So what this says is if I'm, well, Actually, let's draw in uh, M1 as well. So let's say M1 is at this location here. So M1 is at uh, 4, 8, which is this point here. And I've selected a sigma that uh, emphasizes a bit more X0 uh, than X1, but, but I've left out any covariance. What our topo map uh, representation uh, looks like is this. It's a set of ellipsoids or ellipses in two dimensions. If it's three or more, then it's an ellipsoid. Well, we really emphasize this x0 dimension more than the x1 dimension. And 
Okay, so let's go ahead and draw some samples here. Uh, let's assume that our uh, the weight here is 0.75 and the weight here is 0.25. So weight zero is that and weight one is is equal to 0.25. So what this means is that if we're sampling from this distribution, 75% of the time, we're going to sample from this region over here, and 25% uh, of the time, we're going to sample from that Gaussian over there. So essentially, for every three that we, uh, that we select from Gaussian zero, we're going to select one for Gaussian uh, one. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in some samples here. Let me pick a different color that might be a little, stick out a little bit more here. So there's, there's three and there's a sample there. And getting approximately the right numbers. Okay, so so there's there's a sampling approximately 75, uh, 25. Again, with this uh, Gaussian zero, things really fall into this circular type structure. Uh, for the uh, Gaussian one, I don't let's take a few more samples in here, but you're going to see a bit more of an emphasis along that x zero uh, dimension. So, so a lot more variance along this dimension than, than this dimension here. All right, so that should give you a sense of how mixture distributions are constructed and, uh, and how we can sample from them. The, the next challenge that we want to uh, take on is this question coming all the way back over to, to here. We, we know how to, given a set of samples, we know how to, given a set of samples, we, we know how to estimate these parameters, the MK and the Sigma K. And now we're in a situation where we not only have these, but we have them for big K different Gaussians. And then we also have this set of uh, weights. So, so our goal here is we want to, uh, to pick m's, sigmas, and, and weights given some sort of a training set. So let's look at that mathematics next. <laughs>